So why is it so hard to have truly novel ideas in science? It's like, well, new ideas is not the problem. We all have our head full of ideas of what the next experiment could be. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about doing this with a different soil type or doing this particular experiment with a different plant or measuring something different. I mean like truly new things, new concepts, new ideas. Why is this so hard? Well, first you need to have sort of the general layout of the land. You need to know your area of science pretty well and that's already quite hard. You need to not only know the bits and pieces of information, but you need to also assemble a conceptual framework where all these bits and pieces of information fit in. So constructing this is already quite difficult because you need to know for what <laughs> level of generality and for what domain, for example, you assemble this framework. And anyway, this is a lot of work to know uh, the different bits and pieces and then to put them together in a meaningful way is uh, really hard. The next step then is to see what's not there. So it's more st straightforward <laughs> relatively to, to see what's there, obviously, because it's there, there's a paper on it or somebody has already written something about it. But then it's a bit more challenging to have your framework constructed in a way that it also exposes the things that are not there. So what is actually missing, for example, in your matrix or in your overall lay of, layout of this particular area of science. So you need to figure out what's not there. And that's harder. And then for this bit, um, or maybe even to create this bit that's not there, uh, you need to have a creative spark to import some ideas from someplace else, from a related area of science or from a related, I don't know, whatever it is, ecosystem type or um, level of the ecological hierarchy. You need to import these ideas to this particular issue and then ask, well, we've done this and this and this for, let's say, the level of the population, but we haven't really done this and this and that for the level of the community or for the level of the ecosystem. And I think that's that's a lot of the well conceptual discoveries, if you want to call them, that, that we do is we, we apply concepts across levels of the ecological hierarchy or um, with different problems or different questions applied to different domains within ecology, for example. And that's also hard, of course, because you know, it also depends on a little bit of luck. Do you stumble across something, uh, some connection with another area uh, that you happen to also know about, of course, uh, that would fit in here and would expose a gap or tell you a way that you can address this gap with. It's a new method or a new way of thinking about it. And that's also hard. And so, you know, if you take this all together, each bits of which are hard to get this general lay of the land is hard to um, find a gap is hard to have this creative input that lets you even see that gap or address that gap is hard. And then Add to that the fact that there's very many bright minds out there that think about this sort of thing. It's also pretty likely that somebody has already thought about something like this very, very similarly to what you're thinking about, maybe in a slightly different system, maybe aquatic ecosystems or terrestrial ecosystems, let's say. And so therefore it is taken all together hard times hard times hard. It, the whole process is just quite hard, but it's also extremely fun and one of the most rewarding things that you can do, but it's hard.